Hey everybody, my name is Vince from V is for Vino and welcome to Vino Blind. Sounds like wine. So a while back I made a video about how to blind taste which I'd recommend watching before you get into this because these are going to be kind of more exercise videos. We're going to do a bunch of these. We're going to go kind of quickly. So watch the theory of how to do this and then this will be good practice for anybody at home to kind of taste along with us and, and guess with us. I had my crew go out and pick all the wines for these tastings just the other day. They're all from the advanced Court of Masters options. So I will, I'll pop that list up later uh, if you wanna play along. I'm feeling good today. This is our first one of this new series, Vino Blind. I got a good night's sleep. I brushed my teeth about an hour ago, so no, no residual effects there. I feel clear, I feel focused, my mind is sharp. Uh, but honestly, if you watch the other videos, the goal is not to get it right. I mean, obviously the goal is to get it right, but the goal is to train. This is an exercise to help you be a better taster. And like a math problem, we wanna show our work along the way. So what we'll do is I have a little cheat sheet here, but it's just steps of tasting. So I don't skip any for you at home because I want you to be able to taste with me. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go through the sight, the nose and the palate. And then after that, We'll come up with our initial conclusion. We'll figure out what grape it is through deduction, and then we'll give it a guess. Let's go. So, I mean, from a color perspective, white. I mean, this is pretty white. This might even have like some green character to it. So maybe a young wine. I don't see any rim variation. I don't see anything. I guess some people will say the water, kind of watery on the rim would maybe like lead to a young wine too. There's no gas evident. So obviously this isn't a sparkling wine. Um, but the nose, this is the exciting part. This is the exciting part anyway, when I taste a wine in general, even if I know what it is, like that first sip of the nose, I haven't smelled this yet. So it's always the, the most exciting sniff. So here we go. Wow, I like this wine. The intensity is pretty high. So I would say this is a medium plus or high intensity wine. This has a lot of aromatics going on. I think I get some fun tropical notes. Like lychee, definitely some peachiness, some stone fruit. I already have an idea what it is. In the past when I did these tastings, I didn't go with my gut. So my gut already knows what it is. Because last time I was right with my gut and I talked myself out of it. So hopefully I won't do that again. This seems to be a fresh, youthful kind of wine. Um, the fruit character is really bright. Uh, we mentioned there's no color change. So I'm thinking this is a young wine. I mentioned I'm getting a lot of stone fruit. I mean, these are fresh, bright fruit. It's pretty ripe. I get some floral component for our non-fruit. Definitely white flowers, maybe even like jasmine. So uh, that's, that's where I'm at for the nose. Let's move on to the palate. So am I getting any new flavors? I'm still in citrus. Ooh, orangey. I'm getting some orange. Orange peel. Overall, it's kind of confirming what I already got on the nose. Uh, but the main thing you want to do with the palate is you want to get your structure. So let's talk about the acid. Now the acid is tough for me on this. This is a tough call. It has some oily texture to it, some weight to it. So I think I'm going to say medium. Body is, how heavy is it? Is it light and crystal like Sauvignon Blanc? Is it really heavy like a rich oak Chardonnay or is it somewhere in the middle? I'm going to go medium body. Same thing with the alcohol. Medium. My gut, my gut would be like 12%. Finish and complexity. Finish is how long it stays in the palate. And I mean, I'm still tasting some things. I would say this is a medium plus finish. And complexity, I'd say medium. I'm kind of not, I know I'm just saying medium, 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 but that's kind of what this is. This is a nice down the middle wine. The main thing that's standing out for me is the floral component and that kind of lychee-esque component. So now that we have our, our sight, our nose, and our, our palate, we have all those notes, our next step is let's get to some initial conclusions here. Do I think this wine is new world or old world or old cool climate or warm climate? The new world, old world is tough. I didn't talk much about mineral character. Honestly, the new world versus old world is pretty much what's gonna determine what I make this call on this wine because I think it's one of two things and one's old world and one's new world. So this is really tough. And I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to just, uh, let's, see, let's see if I can get more information as I go on. I'm gonna say I don't know yet. 
<laughs> I don't know if it's new world or old world yet. Cool climate or warm climate? I wouldn't describe it as a cold climate. It's not a Germany, but I wouldn't describe it as a super hot climate either. If it's a new world climate, it's like higher elevation or it's somewhere kind of cooler in the new world. All right, but here's the where, what you want to know. Possible grapes, possible places. If you go down the list of grapes, we can cross off a lot right away. Is it Albarino? It could be Albarino, but the over-the-top aromatics is just taking me away from that, so let's cross that off. Is it Chardonnay? No way. Way too aromatic. Uh, is it Chenin Blanc? No, I don't get any of that fun stewed character. I don't get the waxy character. Is it Gewürztraminer? Could be. Is it Gruner? Acid's not really high enough. Its weight is a little too high. You know, Gruner has, a, I think, a lighter body than this. Um, doesn't have any of that oily character. I don't get any white pepper. I don't get any vegetal. So it's not, it's not Gruner. Could it be Pinot Gris? Maybe. I mean, I did mention the waxiness. It's just the floral is so over the top, and that to me means an aromatic grape variety. I wouldn't be totally shocked if it's Pinot Gris, but I don't think it is. Is it Riesling? Riesling usually doesn't get this aromatic. Is it Sauve Blanc? I don't think so. I don't get any gooseberry. I don't get the super high acid. The body's a little too heavy. And there is some bitterness, some phenolic bitterness that might lead me to Viognier. See, I told you I was gonna talk myself out of it. Now I think it's one of three. Now I think it's Toronto's Viognier or Gewürztraminer. So those are our possible grapes, possible places. So this is where I said it's gonna get tough. I really need to make a call here if it's new world or old world. Possible places, it's either Torontes from uh, Mendoza or Salta, Argentina, Viognier from Condrio, or it's Gewürztraminer from Alsace. So those are our possible conclusions. Now I need to make the call. This is the hard part. Give me a second. Ugh, I hate this part because you gotta commit. I am getting like a little bit of phenolic bitterness. I'm pretty sure Viognier would have that. But Condrio Viognier would just be more oily. I just don't get that oiliness. I'm gonna say it's not Viognier, which is still what my gut said from the first initial sip. I think it's either Gewürztraminer or Torontes. And it's big difference, right? Because that's either old world or new world. I'm curious, some of you at home are screaming at the camera right now. You're like, the difference between Gewürztraminer and Torontes would be this, and you're yelling at me, I know it. And the big thing with Torontes that I usually associate with Torontes is that weird aromatic on the nose, but then kind of less so on the palate. And this is pretty flavorful all the way through. But I didn't talk about a lot of mineral component. So, which I would probably expect to on Gewürztraminer, but I think it's Gewürztraminer. Yay! So second choice is Torontes, but I'm gonna guess it's Gewürztraminer from Alsace. Am I? Yes. I'm going to guess it's Gewürz. The place is Alsace, France. Quality or price? I'm gonna say this is a $20 bottle of wine. And I'm gonna guess this is fairly youthful. Let's say this is a 2020 vintage because the acid's pretty high. Am I sure? Last chance to go back and say it's Torontes. Like I said, I won't be surprised if it is, but I think we should do the reveal now. Ready? I might, that might be way off. It is Torontes! I was so close. Ah, this is a good Torontes. I got really close with them, which I'm happy with. Maybe at home, put in the comments. I'm gonna Google it later. How would I have determined it's Torontes versus Gewürztraminer? Like, cause Gewürztraminer from Alsace is, is rich. It is that higher alcohol. Um, this is 12.8. So I think the Gewürztraminer probably would have been even higher because Alsacian wines get to like 14-ish plus. And also remember, I didn't say anything about minerality. Uh, not that there's no minerality in New World wines, but I wasn't talking that, so that should have been a clue for me too. Okay, so I did Google it, and yes, the alcohol would have been higher on Gewürztraminer, and also the phenolic bitterness, which I mentioned like three times, should have tipped me off because that is quintessential Torontes. Oh, I'm so mad that I almost got it and didn't get it. But delicious wine, fun time. Um, this is why we practice, right? The next time I get a Torontes, I think I nail it because you practice and you get this close. So I hope you had fun tasting along with me. Like I said, comments. How would you have determined that that was Torontes versus Gewürztraminer? I'm curious. Thanks for this. 
We'll do another one and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, bye-bye.